Hi there, I'm Tim Friel um, and I'm going to do a very brief introduction on how to use the clinical camera that we use in the department. Uh, this will allow you to get good quality clinical photos that you can use in case presentation. Before you take any clinical photographs of patients, you need to ensure that you've got their consent to do so. And as well as explaining what you're going to be doing to the patient, you need to get a consent form signed and give a copy to the patient. This is the departmental form that we use, um, and it's very straightforward. What you need to do is to explain to the patient what you're taking photos of, i.e. the teeth, um, why you're doing it, which might be for a case presentation or teaching purposes. It's also particularly important to make sure that you tell the patients that the pictures of them will be stored on a computer file. And in doing so, you've got to make sure that the pictures are not traceable to the patient. So you shouldn't put the patient's name on the uh, JPEG that you create. After you've filled in and got the patient to sign the con uh, consent form, you give them a copy to keep. OK, I'm going to give you a very basic overview of the use of this camera. There are three parts to the camera. There's the body, the lens, which in this case is a macro lens. This allows us to get very close-up pictures of teeth. And then finally, there's a ring flash, which is mounted at the end of the lens to allow us to get enough light. When you use the camera, before you use it, you need to set these to the correct um, settings, and then you'll be able to take good quality photos every time. The advantage of this type of camera is that it's so sophisticated it will do all the work for you once it's set properly. So I'm just going to go through some of the individual settings. OK, the first thing that you need to do is obviously to turn the camera on. And when you do so, you'll find this display on the back. Usually the camera will be set automatically for you. And you shouldn't need to make any changes. But the key things you need to know are, firstly, that the flash setting should be set to 1 in 200 or 1 200th of a second. And the f-stop, for most pictures, should be set to f22. If you need to change that, which you will do occasionally, you can press on the AV button next to the camera and then turn the dial to move, make the f-stop bigger or smaller. But for most intents and purposes, if we leave it at f22, that's fine. When you first switch the camera on, you'll see that on the top of the body, there is a dial. This should always be set to manual, which is the M letter, and that should be adjacent to the white bar. Having a manual setting allows you to control any other settings yourself. If, for example, your picture is too dark, you can lighten it. Looking at the lens, the two things that you need to know, first of all, is that it should be set to manual focus. You can use an autofocus setting, but we don't need that in dentistry, and I will show you how we focus later on. So always set the focus to manual. The other setting on the lens is to adjust the macro setting. And if you turn the dial, you'll see that there are these numbers on the side of the lens. And this takes the lens from a one-to-one -one macro position, which would be an extreme close-up. You might use that if you just want to take a, a photo of a single tooth. But most of the time, it's going to be set to about one to three. And that will give you a full mouth picture quite nicely. The third thing that you need to do is to set the flash. And really, the flash does all the work for you. All you need to do is to remember to turn it on. When the flash is ready, a red light will appear. OK, so now that you know all of that, we're ready to take some photographs. OK, so obviously we need a willing subject. Hello, Ben. Hi, Tim. Do you consent to me taking photos of you? I do. There we are. Right. Now, when we're taking photos, infection control is paramount, and it can be very difficult to achieve with the camera. So what you need to do is to make sure that if you're wearing gloves, set the patient up, then remove your gloves so that you can take the picture. It's much easier if you have a nurse, obviously, to do that, or someone to help you. What I'm going to do is going to take a few shots of Ben's teeth. These are the standard pictures that we would use for uh, dentistry. First thing that we need to do is to put on a clean pair of gloves, 
and then we're going to use a cheek retractor so that we can actually see the teeth. These are the cheek retractors which you will get from CSSD. They'll be sterilised before use and they have a wider end and a smaller end. And I'm afraid, Ben, there's no easy way to say it, but you're the wide end. Okay, so open nice and wide, and what you do is place the cheek retractors into the cheek, just relax, and then you can ask the patient to close together. Bite together. And actually, if you're working on your own, the patient can hold the ends of the retractors for you, and that frees you up to take the pictures. If I want to take a frontal picture of Ben's teeth, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the macro setting to about 1 to 3. Remember to turn the camera back on and to turn the flash back on. I don't need to set anything else on the camera. This will automatically give me the picture that I want. In order to take a photograph, then what I do is hold the camera, supporting it underneath, and focus by moving in and out until the teeth come into focus. So, at the moment the teeth are out of focus, and by moving in I can see a clear picture of them on the screen. Now if I'm taking pictures of the front teeth, I want the lateral incisors to be in focus. So once they're in focus, just press the button, and the camera really does all the work for you. Let's just get that back up again. You can see everything that you need to see. Now, we could have used a little bit more retraction, and perhaps with an assistant that would have the, the revealed uh, more of the back teeth. But really, the camera does all the work. If I wanted a much closer up view on the tooth, then what I'd do is I would uh, turn the lens so that it gives one to one, a one to one ratio. And what you'll find is that when you focus in on the tooth, you'll, the camera will be, need to be much closer to the body. So again, what we do is support the undersurface of the camera, the picture's well out of focus, and I actually have to move in really, really close to focus in on the teeth. And you can see the result. It gives us a much closer up view on the front teeth. It's a little bit brighter than the other picture, but the, um, the flash and the camera have compensated for the closeness. Again, it's really done all the work for you. And you can see that Ben's cleaning his teeth nicely. OK, I'm going to go through the basic shots that you're going to use for close-up dentistry. I'm not going to be talking about full-face photographs, which you might need to use in orthodontics. OK, the first shot that we're going to use is going to be a frontal picture of all of the teeth. This is a fairly standard photograph, as I showed you before. Usually, the uh, lens is set to 1 in 3 macro and that should give us everything that we need to use. And as I showed you before, all you need to do is just to focus in on the patient's mouth by moving backwards and forwards. Make sure that the midline of the patient is in the middle of the screen. And that will give you all the information that you need to know. If, like in this case, you accidentally are too far back, then you can easily crop these photographs on the computer to give you the image that you do want. The next view that we're going to do is a side view of the teeth, and for this you need an assistant really to retract for you, and that presents more of the posterior teeth. Again, move slowly into focus. and focus on the canine and first premolar. And that will give you a nice view of the side teeth. And then we'll repeat that for the other side. The next views that you need to take are of the upper and lower arches, and in order to do that you need to use a dental mirror. The way to use the mirror is to insert it into the mouth after you've retracted the lips, and then ask the patient to hold the underside. It can be quite tricky to get it as far back in the patient's mouth, so you need to open really wide. Open really wide, Ben. As wide as you can. And then we carefully place the mirror as far back as we can to the back teeth. And then if you hold the underside, Ben, keep open really wide. That will present the upper arch to you. 
Sometimes as the patient breathes on it, you'll find that the mirror mists up, so you need to blow cold air on it to remove any mist before you take the photo. And if you ask the patient to breathe through their nose carefully while you're doing that, you should be okay. You take the photo by focusing on the mirror, preferably at right angles. One of the problems with taking a mirror shot is that the camera is fooled into thinking the tooth is closer than it is, because the light actually has to hit the mirror and then bounce up onto the teeth. That means that sometimes you need to reset the camera slightly to get a brighter picture. And you can do that by lowering the F number. So again, if we press the AV button and turn the dial, we can actually go down to F20 or F18, and that should give us a slightly brighter picture. So we'll just try that again. Open nice and wide, Ben. Really wide. OK. Thanks, Ben. OK. So let's have a look at these photos again. Here we have on F18, and here we have on F22, which I think you'll see is a little bit darker. You may find that when you put these onto a computer, they will appear lighter. Sometimes the viewfinder that you have on the camera makes things artificially dark. The final picture that you'll commonly need to use is a picture of the lower arch, which again we're going to use the mirror for. On this occasion, it's easier to actually ask the patient to retract their lips and your assistant to hold the mirror. We open nice and wide, and what we're going to do is, again, we're going to place that as far back as we can, and then ask the assistant to hold, hold the mirror. This can obviously be very tricky if your patient finds it difficult uh, to have things at the back of their mouth. But you'll see that we can actually get most of the information, which is a little bit more meaningful if we turn the camera upside down. We can get most of the information that we need. And don't worry about little bits around the edge. We can crop those out on the computer and actually get a much nicer looking photograph. OK, so that's really a basic overview of how to use the camera to get good photos. And really, once it's set properly, the camera will do all the work for you. The key things to remember are, firstly, set the camera to manual, set the focus to manual, and then alter the macro setting according to how close up you want to be. Don't forget to turn the flash on. I know we've all forgotten to do that before. Um, and if you need a little bit more light, you can adjust the f-stop number uh, as I showed you how to do. But for most intents and purposes, you don't really need to touch a thing. Hope you found this useful, and take some good photos.